Hey folks, a little atmosphere tonight. I'm going to read you a story for Netflix because they can't write worse crap. They can't think of anything good to put on as a movie. This is why you have to hire Uncle Al. I work cheap, pay my bills and a few other weird things I have. You know, and taxes and whatever. And I'll give you a good uh, what you may call it? A movie that you can make a series or something. This is Uncle Alan's story for Netflix. It is the dawn of World War II, 1941. Uh, American PBY, you know, the big Catalinas, are trying to escape from uh, Japanese zeros <coughs> in a float plane. You could do that by CGI. Very interesting. That's the first friend. <coughs> Drain, drained all my coffee. Okay. Still version. Look. Inside the main body, out of the sides, the blisters, um, the ragtag crew plus a nun. And she's on a mission. They're trying to get to New, to New Guinea. And they're trying to shoot, escape from these three planes. She shoots down the float plane <laughs> with a Browning 30 caliber machine gun. Very attractive actress in a nun's outfit chewing on a cigar. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of people with her. I think they're... Whatever place they're escaping could be army, could be navy, could be air force, and they're all helping her load and everything else. Okay, and move to my other thing. Also helps when you develop these stories to write it on a piece of paper in little drawings. And then we get another scene, and the pilot's like, "What the hell's up front? We got Japs in back of us." Proper terminology back in those days. I know it's racist now, but back in those days, and they see this mass again, CG, or you could do a special effects with food coloring in a fish tank, and you could do all sorts of weird things. And you got fake lightning and stuff, and you have a giant hole whirling in front of them. Okay, and the both pilots are fighting the controls. The co-pilot and pilot, the radio man, I'm losing signal, I'm losing signal. Okay? And suddenly you see the Catalina and the Zeros follow after it. Zoom. Okay? Next thing, the pilot see the co-pilot and the pilot, and the radio man like, what the hell is? And you see a giant pterodactyl almost crash into the a PBY. And it hits a Japanese Zero and bursts into flame. Okay, Paradacto, Japanese Zero. The Japanese been trying to shoot it with machine guns. and It's a great scene, okay? It looks storyboard, it looks even better. So you still have two Zeros and they're still getting chased after. And one's fighting a Paradacto. It escapes, it goes back through the whirling mass, the lightning and thing. And a Paradacto is trying to chase it and gets hit with lightning and boom! It's Flaming and the Japanese escape going, what the hell was that in Japanese? And back to the vortex. Meanwhile, the last Japanese zero was going like, what the hell? My cans are empty. And this couple strafing runs across the PDY and the nun shooting at it. <laughs> okay, this is only page two. Okay, and finally says, to the Emperor, and he dives his zero into the wing of the um, PDW, and it forces the PDW to crash into the water. Yeah, boom. Radio Man go wasn't, this is why he wears safety belts, wasn't fastened into his rig, and goes flying past the co-pilot and pilot. Zoom out through the window. <laughs> into the water, okay? Zero just disintegrated, and so did the wing, but the uh, PDW still floats. Everybody in the back is like, what the hell just happened? Okay, and the nun has the vaccine strapped to her chest, smoking a cigar. Come on, you 
blank blank in Latin, and I think she means pussies, get into a life raft or stuff like that. And they're all into the water and stuff. And they're, you know, we made it. It's a shallow area. And suddenly, okay, they're going to shore and they see the flying pterodactyls up there circling overhead. And in the shadow of the shallow lake, there's a dark shadow with four flippers. It's a metrosaur, <coughs> a primitive whale. Comes up and eats the body of the dead radio guy. Eh, chomp, chomp, chomp. Okay, so they all make it to shore. <coughs> the nun, the two pilots, and the four other people. <coughs> I guess mechanic, you know, different branches of the service. They're all like, and they're first two guys like, the hell is that? I don't know. And then the other guy, like, where the hell are we? Blah, blah, blah. And the nurse said, and the nun says, that's Jocularity. She's also a nurse. And try to treat other people and help them out of the water while this guy's like, has glasses, shouldn't be in the war, probably worked in as a clerk. And next thing, a giant stone spear. You know, like you see in every caveman movie. Goes through him and shishka bob him through. And he makes a sound. <laughs> and they find out it's Brains, the electrical engineer for the PDW. Or P, is it uh, EBY? <laughs> Go ask Ed's on Ed's t attention to detail. I just read this stuff. All right. And all of a sudden, there's this grasshopper bug creature comes out of the bush and and the mechanic, old oh, one eye, pulls out his 45 and says, Damn grasshopper. And the pilot said, Quit John, boys, let him have it. And the uh, uh, tomahawk wheeling uh, giant it insectoid or salmonite or whatever, it's like a giant grasshopper with big bug eyes, antennas, and waving a, a stone axe. Going booga booga booga, and they open fire. Okay, and they say, uh, let's "See what I wrote down in notes." It's some kind of weird insect man, like on those funny books Brain used to read. Cap, I think we're uh, shot the wrong throw thrower, and he turns around, and they see this. Mass of weird creatures, aliens, everybody carrying from bronze weapons, spears, stone spears, bows and arrows, and, and the remaining survivors, I think it's one eye. What? The nun, praying in Latin, holding the thing, and smoking, still smoking that cigar. I don't know why I wrote that down. The guy with the Mark Spitz, uh, Spitzer, Mustache that was helping the nun shoot down the zeros, like, starts running. And then his co-pilot, and they're all running, like, reload, get over here. And one eye, like, I have plenty of ammo. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a giant net lifts them out of the ground. And they're all tangled up, except for one eye. And he says, come on, you stupid sons of, you know. And he keeps shooting, and he has to, I, this time, I don't know where he got the, the 45. And he's shooting, and he's reloading. I can't figure out why I wrote down two 45s, and he's shooting and reloading. How can he do it? He only has two arms. Okay? And all of a sudden, a raptor comes out and grabs one eye and chomps him in half. But at the same time... I'm going to hell and you're coming with me and rams the um, 45 into the raptor's eyes and pull the trick. Well, you know what I mean. And uh, you hear chomp and then you hear the raptor going ah, ah, because its brain got blown out with the 45. All of a sudden, out of the blue, another raptor is coming after the people trapped in the net and this weird man in strange pajamas. I wrote myself in, sorry with a luger and a samurai sword comes out and kills the other raptor by slicing its head off and freeing the 
the rest of the people in there. And he says, and the guy with the samurai sword saying, do you speak English? Come with me if you want to survive. All right, with a goatee and a mustache and looking cool. And everybody's like, he looks Asian and he speaks and he has this beard and he's carrying a Luger. Sure, pal. I'm Betty Grable. I'm going to follow you. And then the next thing, uh, the co-pilot is Harpoon. Ah! With one of those weird spears thrown by the, one of the survivors. And the guy with the samurai sword turns around and shoots, him with, shoots the thrower with a Luger. And go, pow, pow. Unfortunately, the co-pilot going, eh, eh, eh. I was wrong about Betty Grable. And then dies. Okay, so far, page three of exciting Netflix adventure. Or we could call it the bad Netflix adventure on Dinosaur Island with aliens, uh, prehistoric people, crazies, Romans, whatever. Everybody gets tossed in there. So they're running across the, this uh, giant log bridge, also CGI, and they're being chased by everybody, getting shot with lasers, bows and arrows, crossbows, muskets, and they're all chasing him. So you could see everybody from giants, little people, squirrels, squirrels with guns. They're all chasing them, going every kind of weird language you could think of. You could hear Nazis in the background, Japanese over there, German, uh, wait, French over there, Polish over there, Romans over there. You know, everybody's chasing plus a few aliens going, don't you speak alien? Oh, wait, don't you speak English, you stinking American? Oh, wait. Wait, you're not Americans, you're European. Sorry about that. Translator. And they're chasing them. We get these funny things. Everybody's... It's funny. And then you go across the log bridge and look below. And there's hundreds of planes and ships and spaceships and saucers. And what did I write down in the notes? And spacecraft. And run this way. Waving the sword, handing the Luger to the nun. And the nun and the... Pot, um, Let's see, the remaining uh, pilot and two other guys, I wrote down the notes, the pilot's one of the main characters, and then the, the nun, now wearing a bra uh, cross and wearing her, um, whatchamacallit, the, the headdress, and praying for Jesus, okay, and running and shooting a luger. Yeah, you know, they finally reach to the guy's, let's see, what did I write down? Ah, home sweet home. And it's a weird looking saucer thing from the 1950s. And uh, this ship is from New York City. And here's my fellow captain and friend, another bug creature. Uh, and his universal translator. Another cockroach, this time, <coughs> it's not a grasshopper, it's a cockroach kind of guy. And he says, in a New York accent, Hey, you speak English, you dumbass. Boy, it doesn't say that, but I have notes, and it's it's a New York cockroach in a Uf 1950s UFO. And they said, oh, let's see. And talk, talk, and then they, you know, bad, bad. Have you seen my co-pilot? And they say, nope, nope, nope. Uh, we didn't shoot anybody who looked like a female grasshopper. Okay. That's funny. And then, let's see. The guy who's a time traveler tells them, due to my calculation of the technochromo um, Doppler effect shift around here, around this island, uh, the window or holes will be opening to where we could fly out. But uh, giving enough time to repair the damage to the ship's dr gravity drive so we can make it out here. Uh, let's see. You'll love the 1990s. You'll be famous and rich. Stuff and nonsense. In French, says the nun, now sh shirtless, wearing a stained bra and 
reloading the Luger. I don't know where I wrote down where I get this. We have to get this vaccine for the poor orphan uh, uh, church. Ch I don't know what the hell did I write? Uh, to the poor orphan children in the orphanage in New Guinea. And I wrote something else in Latin or bad French. Refuse to help us and you will suffer the answer of God. Okay, sister, I'll never give a, resist a woman in uniform, blah, 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 90s kind of dialogue. And unfortunately, Chuck's head disappears. And then what the hell did I write? Okay. I guess that was one of the extra guys. Chuck heads explodes in a violent green beam. And then the guy uh, with the goatees whispers into his Bluetooth. Um, it's part of the giant horde. Auto systems, defense systems engage. And you see laser guns shooting down the giant horde people with the laser guns. Okay. So he opens the hood of the flying saucer or trunk and hands the gun. You know how to use one of these? And hands her a 1928 Thompson. And then he hands the captain of the uh, PDY, uh, uh, was it PBY or PBJ, the flying boat, the Catalina uh, captain, a uh, rig gun, and he goes back to his Lugers and they start shooting at the horde. You know, let's see, the cockroach guy and the other guy who's still alive saying, okay, give me the doohickey and we're starting to fix this 1940s, 50s saucer. And they're arguing, cracking jokes and passing tools. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, that looks like a converter. No, it's ca ca carburetor. Okay. Uh, yeah, that part was made by uh, Eaton Musk. You know, the crack joke and like, who in the hell is Ethan Musk? I don't know. I mean, another spam. You know, and they're working on it. Meanwhile, the nun's sweaty and he's, you know, sweating all over the place. And she's down to the belt holding just the skirt of the nun's outfit. She's topless with only the nun's headdress and she's sweating through her bra. And she has the case of the vaccine around her neck. And she's shooting the 1928 Thompson at it. And the captain shooting his ray gun at the horde. And what the hell's? And the, suddenly they turn around and the auto, gu auto guns are drying out. They're going, they're shooting rays, you know, going spud, 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 spud. So they're getting intermittently shorter and shorter and the rays like, and the horde's like, what the hell are they shooting at us? Mm -hmm. Always like when, when alien turns to the, Nazi soda. I don't know. I don't speak English, you weird foreign alien. So anyway, they've still got handguns and stuff in there. And stuff, and the pilots are throwing the things. Uh, the nuns run dry out of the Thompson after mowing down 12 more. And the pilot and the, and the, the guy with the goatee are throwing hand grenades and the guy with the goatee is waving the samurai sword and anything gets by him he gets chopping them down giant rat creatures the mice creatures the dwarves um whatever with the samurai sword and they uh what you might call it uh, the mechanic and the uh, cockroach guy in the newer attacks and it's like yeah it's time to split and i guess the cockroach guy likes Rap music. Come on, bro. Let's let, leave this hunky place or something like that. Um, and they're all in there. And the nun's dress is now like a mini skirt. She's had a sweaty bra on the time. Uh, Thompson's ran out and she's helping people in. And all of a sudden. Let's see. The 1950 saucer blows away the remaining attackers and they're flying out through the vortex. Meanwhile, the remaining 
a zero that was circling out there. It's only been a couple of minutes. And also, they're all freaking out. And they're like, and he says, I will die for the emperor. And gun's empty because he shot up the pterodactyl before him. As he dives towards the flying saucer and like, you die, whatever you are, for the honor of the empire. And the cockroach guy like, what the bloody? And the other thing, like uh, the other guy from New York, like, it's that damn kamikaze. He's going to ram us. And then, Aye! and then you see that zero crash into the saucer and the captain and the bearded guy uh, is like uh, tossing the uh, cockroach's guy head off of him and telling the pilot and the nun, it's time to abandon ship. And the, the guy who was helping from other guy from New York, human, is also dead because only you see his legs flopping around and no upper torso. And the pilot and the nun and the uh, goatee guy, now without any weapons, quit into the skate pod. And meanwhile, both the Zero and the, the UFO is firing inside the vortex. And it's heading down towards a volcano. And all of a sudden, before the volcano blows up and the vortex seals forever, the skate pod launches out. And then somebody makes a joke, don't you like these holiday packages in the tropics? Hmm. And then everybody's paddling and you got the, and I think uh, I got an extra, I can't remember who it was. And he's paddling and all of a sudden, um, machine gun fire. And somebody, uh, whatchamacallit, falls into the water and the giant uh, great white sharks eats the guy and the guy with the goatee says, forget it, Barty, he's going to be shark meat. And it makes no difference who it was. And again, uh, another PBY, notice them. And then towards the end, you have another zero, guns loaded and everything. And then you see the whole thing starts all over again. And the, the has it at the end, at the end of the film, the end with a question mark. And that's how you make a good Netflix movie. Okay, but nobody ever listens to old Uncle Al. So you have a nice holiday, folks. And if anybody in Netflix, I got a good crime one. I just got to remember where I put my notes for it. Uh, but like I said, you can do anything, use a little imagination, lay off the wokeness, okay? You can make anything. You have to adjust it and tune it and keep it short for an hour and 25 minutes. That way it's neat, clean, and you get all the merch out of it. T-shirts, little toys, ray guns, dinosaurs, <laughs> action figures. I'll be the nun without no shirt. Jesus love you, pull the string. Go to hell, you know. I'm a virgin. Easy. It's not rocket science, folks. So I'll catch you later. You have a nice night. This is part three of Wednesday, I think. Is it Wednesday? It's supposed to be December 22nd. I forgot what video I'm filming. Uh, like I said, I'm gone sick and been taking a lot of medication, so... I'll catch you later. You have a nice day now. Bye. And don't forget, be nice on Christmas. Help out a lot of people. I'll try not to throw up. Got the fire behind me. Have a Merry Christmas. Please check out Dean at Orion. That's the Bushcrafter channel. He does great work. And I think he's working on a 10 millimeter juke card amber holder. And I hope. Or is it? Ember, cat Ember Catcher, excuse me. I'll see you later, folks. You have a nice day. And complain about Netflix. Get better writers. Later, folks.